Hi there, this is Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts and this is my review of the Samsung Q1 Ultra. Uh, I did an unboxing video of this product a few weeks ago, just uh, really a day after I had received it, and I had a chance to take it with me to CES to use it as a uh, an internet access device, a mobile media player, and sort of get a feeling for uh, what the device is capable of. I should say off the top, uh, this is generally not going to be the most positive review I've written because, or rather, I've videotaped. In a lot of ways, the Samsung uh, Q1 Ultra is a device that's sort of uh, searching for a function. There are a few different uh, versions of the Q1 Ultra, and in particular, there's there's some other versions out there that actually might have ended up making me uh, a bit more of a, a positive reviewer, but as it stands, the particular version that I was sent is lacking a couple of features that I think would make it much more compelling for my uses. So, um, the, the best thing that I found that the Q1 Ultra is actually really good at uh, is, or rather fairly good at, is being uh, a video player. Because it's got a really nice, you know, a wide aspect uh, a ratio screen, uh, I found that, um, you know, I could load up a VLC, I could use it to uh, watch watch a movie, you know, spec out a, a 16 by 9, you know, aspect ratio, uh, and it worked really, really well. Uh, the battery life was long enough to last for uh, almost two two full length movies, so for me that's great. The screen is, uh, you know, bigger than than uh, any portable media player out there, uh, reasonably. Um, the one of the issues, of course, is that the uh, the hard drive size uh, isn't is isn't particularly uh, gigantic. Um, the hard drive on this particular unit, I actually need to refresh my own memory because I haven't looked at it in a while. Yeah, so this particular hard drive is a, a 30 gig, uh, 30, or sorry, a 40 gig hard drive, um, but with Vista loaded up on there uh, and really not much in the way of third party software. I have, like I said, a, a couple of video files on there. There's only about 20 gigs on here. So again, that's, that's definitely not bad. You know, you load up some, some uh, XVIDs or WMV video files take them with you, you know, in the span of about 10 gigs, you could, you know, reasonably carry uh, at, uh, at least, you know, three or four videos on there. So as a video player, this is a, a compelling device. Unfortunately, I found it a little bit difficult to find uh, anything more that I that I really liked using it for. Um, I tried using it for web browsing, and it, it's, it's definitely not bad, but I found that the uh, the keyboard here, which is split up into two different sections, um, it's just really, really hard to get any kind of reasonable data entry uh, going on it. So it might be, so it wasn't bad for web browsing, you know, um, op um, opening up a web browser, typing in an URL, and then using the stylus or even your fingers to navigate it. That wasn't too bad. Of course, one of the issues is that the, the vertical resolution uh, is, I believe it's uh, uh, 600 pixels tall. So that, that you, you end up with the ability to handle a fair amount of web page this way, but not so much this way. So you're doing a lot of scrolling. Again, definitely not a horrible thing, but when it comes to uh, doing like, you know, email on it, this, this split uh, keyboard makes it really difficult to, uh, to, to answer email. So I didn't enjoy that particularly much. One of the scenarios that I think this device would actually be great at, since it's good at uh, it's good at watching videos, would be, you know, taking it with you on vacation uh, or uh, business travel. One of the things that I always, of course, like to do is take pictures. Unfortunately, uh, and this, I mean, I have to just ding Samsung for this. They did not put any kind of a memory card reader on here. Now, there's a slot up at the top here that's going to be a little bit hard to see, but I think on other models, that slot is, in fact, used uh, as a memory card reader, but in this particular configuration, there's no memory card reader. So you're, you have this great device that could potentially be used, like I said, when you're on vacation, you know, uh, to offload your photographs at the end of the day, maybe do a bit of, you know, light editing, but without a memory card reader, you have to go and carry an extra accessory with you, like a USB memory card reader, and I, I hate carrying around extra accessories when I don't have to, so that scenario is kind of shot. Um, also, uh, you know, I, I shoot with a digital SLR, so I shoot really big memory files and an average vacation, you know, I might come back with 10 or 15 gigs uh, worth of uh, photos, you know, and videos. And because this model only has a 40 gig hard drive, that doesn't leave you a lot of wiggle room. So the Q1 Ultra with uh, a memory card reader, you know, something that could handle at the bare minimum, uh, you know, SD memory stick and XD cards. Uh, compact flash would be wonderful, but again, that's that's not the end of the world because you'd have to use an adapter for that. Um, but if it had a bigger hard drive, you'd actually be able to use it for sort of those two scenarios. Um, the device uh, does, you know, uh, it will actually run uh, Windows Media Center. It does actually run the full, you know, Vista Arrow, uh, Arrow experience, but everything is just slow. 
Um, you can see how long it's taking, you know, for uh, Media Center to start up here. Everything just feels um, a little, a little bit sluggish. Um, you know, Media Center again, it does, uh, it does work, but uh, it's definitely not overly, uh, overly snappy. But again, you know, if you want to use this to uh, look at videos or you know, uh, check out pictures uh, in slideshow mode, it does make a good device for media playback. But Again, without a bigger hard drive and a memory card reader, uh, it doesn't fulfill its promise all that well. I toyed around with a few of the other applications that Samsung, uh, you know, put on here. You can do some interesting things, like you can. Um, there's a, a menu button up here, and when you press the menu button, it opens up a, a list of uh, some different options here. So you can actually uh, adjust adjust the brightness. You can actually rotate the screen, so you can actually uh, flip flip the screen uh, completely in one direction and it's a little bit slow at doing that. So if you want to, you can end up having the device in this mode, which might make it a good, uh, you know, a, a, a slate mode, maybe if you're a doctor or something like that. It does come, uh, initially I thought this was a lanyard hole, and it sort of is, but instead they actually give you this uh, carrying strap. So there definitely might be some uh, vertical market applications, you know, where uh, someone needs to walk around with a small uh, portable device, you know, that they, they have strapped onto their hands. For my uh, usage scenarios and the way that I use devices, I just found this device, it, it sort of didn't really fit. Um, again, as a media player, I really, really like it, um, but uh, it would maybe, you know, if it, if it had a higher CPU, um, rather a faster CPU, and uh, it would probably be a bit more responsive. I noticed that when I was watching videos, every now and then it would bog down, or certainly if, if there was anything running in the background while I was watching a video, it would really have a lot of trouble with that. Now, when I was at CES, I did actually see a newer version of, of the Q1 Ultra, uh, and on the back, it had um, it was a little bit thicker because there's actually an extended battery that you can get for this unit, and uh, the one that I saw at CES actually had an extended battery. But what was interesting is that the rest of it was actually slightly thicker as well. So while you ended up with an overall thicker device, you had more battery life. I think I think they were saying five or six hours of battery life, and uh, it also had a faster CPU in it. So I think they needed more space in here for cooling. So with a faster CPU, more battery life, you actually end up with a much better device. But not surprisingly, uh, that device was being shown at CES by Samsung's uh, IT salespeople. So again, we're talking a, a vertical market application, which usually means more more expensive. So. The Samsung Q1 Ultra, in the particular configuration that I was sent, it's sort of, uh, it's hard to f figure out exactly what you would use it for, especially, again, at the price point. Uh, I heard, um, actually, someone made a comment on my YouTube video that Best Buy are selling these units for $399. They're sort of blowout sales for the base model. At $399, this would be a no-brainer. I would absolutely purchase this for $399 just strictly to be used as a media playback device or maybe a light web surfing, web surfing device that you would, you know, have next to your couch in your TV room. However, you know, when you get up into the $799 and higher price points, you start to look at the trade-offs for this device and you may have specific needs, you know, where a device like this is, is perfect. I know that when I published this video on Digital Home Thoughts, there was a commenter in our forums that absolutely loved his and, and it really fit really well into his lifestyle. For the way I use digital devices, this particular device didn't fit in so well, um, but your needs may differ. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, I, overall, I, I liked it, but again, it was just missing a few things that would have made it uh, a lot closer to being a home run in my books. So it's Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed this video review, and uh, check out Digital Home Thoughts for more reviews. Thanks.